Welcome everybody. This is uh, SharePoint Patterson Practices uh, Community Call. This is the bi-weekly general SharePoint development special interest group call. Um, we do have two different special interest groups which are meeting bi-weekly. So basically every single Thursday at this hour and at this time, uh, we have a community call around SharePoint development. So bi-weekly it is around SharePoint framework and client-side development and bi-weekly it's around provisioning and uh, PowerShell and all of the other stuff uh, which is outside of the uh, SharePoint framework. So we're trying to kind of balance this uh, because there seems to be a slightly different audience for both of them. Uh, it might be that you participate, uh, you, obviously you can participate on both of the call, so no problems with that. Now, before we get started, so quickly introducing myself, my name is Vesa Yuvonen, I'm a senior program manager from SharePoint Engineering. So my team is responsible of SharePoint framework and the API layer and the REST APIs and graph APIs on SharePoint and all of that stuff. So I do work in that team. Uh, so if there's any development things which you want to complain to somebody, I'm probably the best target uh, to complain. Yeah, uh, kind of a sarcastic joke uh, if you understood that. But obviously, um, we absolutely want to have feedback. We absolutely want to have your input around the stuff what we do within the SharePoint development. That's one of the key reasons why we have this course as well. Now, quickly for those people uh, who might be here the first time, uh, so let me quickly introduce uh, what we are going through. So this is a bi-weekly call where we concentrate on the, let's say, general SharePoint development topic. So this is more around end-to-end -end solutions, provisioning, automation, uh, uh, client-side APIs, REST APIs stuff, rather than the client-side development stuff. So we do have a separate special interest group call um, around the SharePoint framework and JavaScript development topics. Uh, we do talk about how to maybe potentially light that stuff in this call from a provisioning perspective, but then um, the SharePoint framework and the client-side development is such a big topic as well. There's a separate uh, bi-weekly call on that. Now, AKMS SPPMP community uh, is uh, the community side in the Microsoft Tech community, a good location to have a discussion and have an open discussion on things. And AKMS SP Dev Docs is our official documentation. I'll come back on that one in a second. Now, uh, for this particular call, we already have quite a lot of people attending, which is great. Um, and that's it's great to see that people are finding these calls um, and are interested on what we're doing from a SharePoint development perspective. Now, if you are interested uh, of participating on this course is more, more, more detailed or in the community uh, more, uh, more and more in the future, there's a few different ways of doing that. So if you built, if you have built something cool, uh, so like a solution or something which you want to demonstrate uh, for others uh, in the community, you just reach out and we absolutely can give you 10 to 15 minutes to demonstrate what you have actually built. That could be provisioning, that could be reusable PowerShell, that could be scripts or whatever. What is relevant for that particular community call. You can also contribute in a GitHub. So github.com slash SharePoint is the SharePoint location um, where we have plenty of samples, plenty of community and open source initiatives uh, around different areas on SharePoint development. And the key point, uh, if you don't want to do anything else, please provide feedback. So please let us know uh, what is if there's areas where you're not where you're disappointed and we need to improve. Please let us know if actually if you're happy with something, that's a great feedback as well. Uh, even though quite often we tend to get more and more negative feedback, but that's also understandable. Uh, people tend to react and share their feedback openly when it's negative rather than when they're super happy on something. Now today's call. And today's uh, discussion, so we have a kind of a two uh, topics, a main topic. So obviously we'll start again on the general announcements. So a few things, what has happened within the past weeks. And then we move along around the SharePoint hub sites. And in the SharePoint hub site section, I'm going to do the live demos on that one. So I'm going to use some of the slides from Ignite uh, presentation, but I'm updating those uh, on the current situation. So what is actually supported and how things actually are working. The hub sites are not yet available for you. They will be available available relatively soon. So we are hitting pretty soon on the timelines of enabling this in preview uh, capability. So for targeted tenants uh, or first release tenants, whatever name you're uh, calling uh, that one. And then we have an additional demo on the later part of the call uh, from Paolo Pialorsi around consuming my uh, ship. Oh, 
did I, well, that's not precisely the description of the demo. The demo actually should be uh, using patching uh, with Microsoft Graph, uh, but Paolo is going to join us later, late, later today and do that on the later part of the call. Anyway, I'm going to take the majority of the time uh, having a discussion on the hub sites and you can ask questions and we can talk about how, what does it actually mean in practice when you are designing uh, your SharePoint online solutions. Now, a few things before we go to the hub side topic, uh, and a few things how before we uh, move in to more detailed on this topic. Just a reminder: AKMS SP DevDocs, uh, our official location for all of the SharePoint Dev documentation. Um, Everything which is relevant and active, it's nowadays relocated in docs.microsoft.com. This is the same location. AKMS SP DevDocs is going to redirect you to the docs.microsoft.com slash SharePoint. And from here, you can find then guidance on SharePoint framework, site design, site script, site theming, and all of the, all of the hub site uh, insights will be there as well whenever we get that one uh, out uh, for you to be available. The second thing which is really, is really, really important, uh, so easiest way to report uh, you, if you find an issue in SharePoint Online, or right now we are hearing uh, issues around uh, throttling, as an example. Quite a lot of customers apparently are seeing some throttling exceptions. Please let us know. Um, easiest way to let us know is obviously if you have a Premier Support contract, you can open up a Premier Support case. If you don't have a Premier Support contract and you just want to let engineering to know that you're running into some random issue or you are suspecting that there's a, a issue somewhere, please, please, please let us know using our issue list in Akita. So AKMS SP Dev Issues is going to redirect you to the SP Dev Docs repository. And there in the issue list, we are uh, basically uh, getting feedback in uh, on the SharePoint engineering on things which do not work. Uh, it might be also a question and we can potentially help you on solving the issue. Uh, or if you find a potential problem in SharePoint Online, please let us know so that, so that we can fix that as fast as possible. Cool. Now, uh, other things. So, what has excuse me? What has happened within the last uh, two weeks? So last week we went live with the SharePoint Framework 1.4.1, and this this isn't really the main topic of today's special interest group call, but this is actually super, 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 super interesting capability. We'll have a live demo on some of this stuff again. Uh, well, we have a webcast coming up. We have a live demo on the next week's special interest group call. But the reason why this is super, super interesting is that it enables you as a developer to call also third party APIs, web APIs from SharePoint Framework. Uh, so from a JavaScript, which is hosted in SharePoint Modern Pages, you can call securely a third-party web API, which is hosted, for example, in Microsoft Azure, now, typically in Microsoft Azure in this case. And that web API can then do automations towards SharePoint Online. So the key point of this one is that now we're finally, finally starting by 1.4.1 uh, version of SharePoint Framework. You have a secret way from a client side, from a browser side, call a web API in Microsoft Azure in a secret way and you're bypassing the identity and everything else so that on the web API side, you can then start automation, uh, connect to on-premises, do hybrid solutions, uh, start whatever machine learning things in SharePoint, uh, in the Azure, uh, call back on the SharePoint Online, do modifications and all of that. And that is actually really, really, really super great capability. That is now in preview starting from last week. Uh, we're looking into going to GA, obviously, well, I kept, we don't even have an exact date yet for uh, GA announcement. It depends really on what we find uh, during the preview. But hopefully, and this will go well, it's planned to go live, live to GA relatively soon if there's no significant issues around the capability. But the KMS SPFX, uh, you can find a latest documentation on the graph and third party APIs. This also gives an, an option uh, for exposing additional Microsoft Craft scopes. So as an example, last week or was it week before, we announced that uh, there's an Intune API even in Microsoft Craft. Using these new capabilities, you are able to access those Microsoft Craft scopes as well. So we're kind of unblocking the whole uh, scope scope uh, area in the Microsoft Craft uh, API. How you do that is that the tenant administrator is granting additional permissions. So you as a developer, you can't just randomly access whatever information in the in the company. Uh, tenant administrator in the tenant has to grant those additional uh, permissions. So this is a really, really a game changer. Right, Ralph is uh, commenting in the iron window as well. Cool. <clears throat> 
Um, quick question. There's a question from Russell, so I can pass the user identity to an Azure function with this. Uh, that is correct. So you, know, so you can securely call an Azure function, then you can use the Azure identity in the Azure sign. And that's really why it is such a big game changer. Yeah, I think this is the holy grail of everything in SharePoint Online um, in the connection with Microsoft Azure. And so I don't really think people understand how big of a deal this is. And that's why I wanted to actually mention that explicitly in here. Now, uh, moving on on other kind of announcements or topics. Uh, so um, one of the things what we've been doing on a monthly basis uh, for quite a few years actually already, we've been releasing the latest client-side object model and PowerShell. And this following release will happen tomorrow, tomorrow morning at uh, European time or super late uh, Pacific time uh, in uh, today. So tomorrow to see some, there, there will be additional properties going live as well, but this is just a selection of uh, the key things what I wanted to raise for, uh, let's say, a discussion or comments. So this will go live as a NuGet package uh, to the NuGet gallery for SharePoint Online uh, client-side object model. And it will then contain, for example, things like the hub site ID for the site properties. And it's a hub site, so you're able to, when you're provisioning uh, sites, you can actually set those things as well. You can also apply a site design to a specific site using the tenant uh, object or tenant uh, operation. Or you can also apply a theme to a specific site, which should have been there obviously in the past already, but now it's finally possible. Uh, yeah, starting from tomorrow's client side object model version. Um, does, there's a good question from Rahul. Does CSM supports adding site collection app catalog API? Um, no, there's no actually automation right now for that one because it is a tenant level operation. So it's only exposed to PowerShell. That's a fair point. We should probably have an API for that one. Good feedback. Uh, Note it and written down. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take two seconds. Uh, can't multitask, so I need to pause talking uh, when I'm writing this down. Uh, site call app catalog. Uh, technically, well, the, technically there could be a way of achieving this, but I think we need to actually document that. And I don't, I don't want to speculate that because then uh, people are starting to hack uh, and do hacking, hacky uh, solutions. So let me get back on that one slightly later. Um, cool. And that is anyway, yeah, we'll make that happen uh, sooner or later. Cool. Uh, the other things on the PowerShell side, uh, so PowerShell is getting released at the same time. So the SharePoint Online PowerShell, so the native out-of-the-box PowerShell is always getting released at the same time. Uh, tomorrow we'll add uh, the add uh, SPO hub site association that's actually replacing the Connect SPO hub site, uh, which was weirdly named commandlet. So in the removed commandlets, you can see the Connect SPO hub sites going away and the add SPO hub site association is getting back. Now, this capability, as an example, does not work for you still tomorrow. You will see an exception around the preview capabilities not being enabled within your tenant, so you can't actually use the hub site starting tomorrow. But it's coming pretty, pretty uh, close um, or pretty soon. <laughs> Uh, so it is happening relatively soon within upcoming weeks. There's invoke SPO site design. So you're able to apply a site design on an existing site, which is a great thing uh, from Sean Squires, who just uh, dropped in the call as well. Uh, great job, Sean, on that one. Uh, remove SPO uh, hub site association is for removing the hub site association. We'll talk about that one slightly later today in more detail. And then set SPO web theme. So applying a theme uh, to an existing site. So obviously, these are then the applying a theme has been there from a UI perspective for a while, and you've been able to apply a theme as part of the site design or site script actions. But if there, we've been lacking the APIs to apply a theme on existing sites, so that's going to be now available starting on tomorrow's release. So, good direction, uh, and those are uh, those are moving forward nicely. Cool. Uh, quick update on the, just quick look on the roadmap slide, which I've been keeping on all of these calls as well. Shipped since September, quite a lot of stuff on the SharePoint framework side um, and ALM API, site specific app catalog and all of that. And then site designs is now uh, in GA status. It's 100% uh, available across uh, worldwide. So that's a great thing as well. The Microsoft Graph and third party web API improvements is now in preview. That was the 1.4.1 release from last week. And 
can have a look on our dev uh, devtodoffice.com slash blocks uh, blog site if you haven't actually checked uh, what does that mean in practice. Uh, coming soon uh, is the hub sites and hub APIs. Uh, so preview starts relatively soon uh, within, how would I put it, uh, within days or weeks rather than months. Uh, well, we promise to make that happen by Q1 uh, calendar year of 2018. So it's going to happen within a month. Uh, that's pretty safe to say. And the Groupify API should come to preview quite soon as well. Um, there's a question, uh, Russell, is the new admin site uh, rolling out? That is in preview already uh, for targeted released tenant. So if a tenant is in a targeted release, you can actually see uh, the new SP admin uh, pages. Now, um, it is extremely, well, there's a polite, <laughs> Dean is saying politely, yes, but it's very incomplete. Yes, it's, it's super, super incomplete. Well, depending on what we mean with uh, complete. So obviously, there's the PowerShell UIs, PowerShell operations will be there as well, um, always. But the admin is always falling, be uh, coming behind, and we will gradually enable more and more admin operations in the modern UI, admin UI as well. Now, when, where, how fast, that's still unclear. But you will see more and more functionalities uh, getting lighted up on the modern admin UI. And it does look pretty sparse, um, that's fair statement. Cool. Uh, now, going to the actual hub site. So let's talk about the hub site slides. So like I said, I took some slides from uh, uh, Melissa's uh, Ignite session, but I'm trying to bring this in a technical uh, discussion as well. So what does it actually mean? So this is not just a um, not just a recap of those slides if you have already had a chance to look on our Ignite, re uh, Ignite recordings. So the key point of the hub sites is that Technically in SharePoint Online and technically in SharePoint, typically people want to have sites associated between each other. Now, in the past, we've been doing more and more something like we've been associating, creating massive site collections. And then the massive site collections do open up an additional, let's say, layer of challenges. So managing permissions, uh, there's a performance impact, managing who can see what, where, and how stuff is getting aggregated isn't actually that flexible in the, in the, let's say, in the classic SharePoint. So therefore, now we're looking into heading to the direction where we're able to do this in a site collection level. And the hub site is really the way how to do that. So we're able to associate individual site collections to a hub, uh, which is then the, let's say, in quotes, the parent site collection between those things. And then uh, there are common controls and branding being leaked from the parent as the hub site uh, to the actual site collection site. So as an example, when you're associating your site to the hub site, the hub site branding or the theming will be leaked or set to those uh, sub-sites which are getting associated automatically and you don't have to do anything. And that's really the key point. So we're able to tie in these things together. One uh, really, really big thing obviously is also the shared global navigation because now you can then have multiple site collections which are tied into this one set of, na uh, set of navigation and you can easily um, move between the site collections because they are, well, they're being linked on the global navigation which is being controlled in the hub site. And I'll show this one in practice in a second. Now the SharePoint hub sites, they really is around uh, bringing together uh, related teams and communication sites. So what is uh, um, communication sites? So this is around the modern experiences of SharePoint, but it is for both. So you can actually tie in both theme sites and communication sites to the hub site. So you need to select one site to be a hub site and then you're able to associate other sites to it. Uh, it rolls up news and site activity. So you can actually, we have web parts available uh, for that one. So you can actually see the uh, site activities in the sub site collection, so to say, uh, in, the, in the hub level. You all, we also aggregate the news uh, from the sub sites, which is a great feature. So you can actually see the news in the hub site from the sub, uh, sub site collections, which are associated to the hub. There's a cross site navigation. Uh, so whenever you modify anything in the uh, in the hub site, uh, that navigation is being automatically reflected in all of the other hub sites, and they can still they still have their sorry sub sites. They still have their uh, own navigation as well, and I'll show this one uh, in practice as well. Now, uh, and cross-site navigation, by the way, supports both, uh, let's say, classic navigation model, let's say, adding links uh, to the navigation and also taxonomy-driven uh, navigation. Now, 
I'll come back on that one and let's talk about the technology behind of that uh, in a second in the live demos. Search across related sites for content. So, you're, so if you are in a hub site, you're able to target your search only to those sites which are in that hub or in the sub site collection. So you're able to then target uh, to that relevant data uh, for your organization or your division as an example. Consistent look and face across the sites, which is the theming uh, for now. There will be additional branding capabilities also in futures. And then admin create, uh, site owners adapt and use. And what that means is that the administrator, tenant administrator selects which are the site collections which are actually hub sites. And then you as a site owner, you can actually assign your site to be part of a hub. Now, we do have permission settings. We do have all of visibility settings. So um, as an example, uh, if you are part of the HR organization, you, we can conf configure your tenant in a way, or you can configure your tenant in a way that the people in HR organization can only associate their site collections to the HR hub as an example, so not to the other hubs uh, available, which is a great, great, great capability. Now, um, let's, uh, did I actually have a slide, uh, demo coming up next? Not yet. So this is a, a quick example uh, of that one. So we have three different sites uh, available. So we have a welcome to Contoso, live at Contoso and benefits planning, and they all are part of work at Contoso uh, hub. So you can actually see the, the second layer of navigation there in top uh, right underneath the suite navigation, which is coming from the hub level. So they have a consistent, uh, consistent navigation across all of the sites. Um, and what, how do we actually make that happen? I kind of touched that one uh, quickly already. So site owner controls uh, these settings from the site settings, so from the UI of the site settings. So you can absolutely do this using API as well, so you can actually do that. But one site can belong to a one hub, which is a, a, a uh, important thing to remember. And there's no hubs which are associated to the hub. So there's only a one hub, which, and then it has um, sub-site collections. Uh, this works in all site templates, so it should work uh, in all site templates, limited only to one half, which like mentioned, can be automated with site script action, which means that if you're using site designs or site scripts, uh, and whenever you're creating a new site collection, you can, for example, create a configuration where, again, certain people, for example, HR organization people, whenever they create a site collection, their site collection will be automatically associated to the HR hub. Uh, as part of the, the configurations. And that would be configurations with site designs and site scripts and, and the permissions behind of that. Cross-site navigation is there, like mentioned already, displays all in modern pages. Uh, theming uh, is synced from a hub site. And let's have a, a real life demo on that one as well as we move along on the demo section. So let me actually flip on the demo and share my screen. And then I'll actually start sharing the slides from my local uh, machine so we don't have to flip between the sharing and non-sharing. So let me share my screen. Uh, oh, good question from Philip. Uh, do SPFX extension appear above or below the hub global navigation? I think they should be below because the, the, they should they are below because yes, they are below because um, the, the SPFX extensions are on the site collection level and not actually the, the hub or the main navigation is the, on the higher level. So there, there is actual thinking behind of this, uh, which is great. Cool. So here we have a Helsinki site. This is just using a custom, uh, well, uh, this is uh, using the uh, modern, this is a modern team site. This is using custom welcome page, uh, provisioned from a site design. doesn't really matter how we got the site uh, created. And I'll show some of the demos uh, slightly later today. Now, if I want to have this one associated to an existing hub, let's actually have a look on our work at Contoso Hub. Let me slightly adjust my volume so I can see that. Uh, here's Here we have a work at Contoso Hub. And work at, at Contoso Hub has a global navigation, uh, which is actually working in multiple levels. So I can actually move. Uh, there's a drop downs and all of that uh, in here as well. Um, and I can actually modify this global navigation directly in here, because in this case, this global navigation is just a manage, uh, sorry, navigation nodes within the site. They could be also taxonomy driven navigation. I'll come back on that one in a second. Now, if I want to associate my site to this hub site, depending on the permissions, uh, it's nothing more than a me as a site collection owner or site owner. 
I can do a site information and in the site information uh, I then have a hub site uh, association available where I can actually see all of those um, hub sites which I have permissions uh, to associate my site into. So in this case, we were looking into associating this site to the work at Contoso and because there's no limitations on the permissions which I'm allowed to see, uh, I can see all of the hub sites and I can also see that one being selected. So now if I select that hub site and if I save the setting, we can actually see magical things happen. And there we go. The theming, which is pretty, and uh, the reason why the theming is black, so we can actually see this to happen uh, truly. So with the theming, what got leaked in uh, from the hub, and also what's important is that we actually got the global navigation uh, from the hub as well. So now we have um, everything coming from the hub, and this is consistent uh, from the hub navigation perspective. So now if I need to go to the hub level, I can click the hub uh, icon or the, uh, the link in here, and now I'm in the hub level. And then after a while, if I would, would have created a new pages or news articles in my site, which is just associated here, I would actually see those news getting aggregated on this news section in here. Now, there was a question around, uh, can I have a hubs associated to the hubs? And the answer is no. So if you are already, if I'm a hub site, there is no hub site uh, way to associate hub to a hub site. So there's no association there, and that's not supporting. Uh, there is a hub site setting, so obviously I can change the icon, I can send some other settings in here as well. But it, it, the SharePoint obviously is aware of which of the sites are hub sites and which of the sites are sites associated to the hub sites, so to say. But relatively simple, uh, relatively straightforward uh, from that perspective. And, and like you saw, the theming was actually leaked in as well. So originally this site, if I go back on Helsinki site, can we see the Helsinki? We should see the Helsinki on associated sites. So this is a view of all of the sites associated to this uh, hub and it is search driven so there is a small delay then uh, apparently on that one so let me actually jump in here so now if i'm back in helsinki we can see that the theming is here i can see the exactly the same navigation and if i would do any changes on the navigation um, they are then uh, reflected uh, in this level as well there's obviously always some level of a caching happening in all of these things because it's just realities of life nothing can happen in the snap of our fingers or refresh in the snap of our fingers but we're trying to get all of that as fast as possible um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, there's a quick question from Marcel around, uh, yes, and Sean replied on that, when will this move to live tenants? So this one will be moved to live in tenants within, uh, within weeks, let's put it this way. Uh, so in March, so early March. And thank you, Sean, for taking care of the questions. Now, I will flip back on the slides for a second and I'll come back on the demos uh, as we move along. So let me actually get in here and there we go. Quite a few demos actually, which I'm going to go through. Now, the hub site itself, I would like to mention, uh, the news are roll rolling up to the hub site, um, and uh, you're able to see then you're able to see the news from a sub site as well. So you, if you if you well in a hub site level, that's pretty logical. Uh, you can view and create associated sites, uh, which is a uh, kind of an interesting uh, functionality. So that's something which is planned to be there right now. That's not functional uh, even in the in our uh, preview tenants. So it might be there slightly later than when we actually start to preview. But that's absolutely in our uh, intention to do as well. Um, and uh, then that would actually use the normal site creation process, uh, which is actually on Sean's table. Uh, Sean can potentially explain uh, where we are with this one. Now, uh, you can also see the activity uh, across the hub. So you can see activities across the other sites which are associated to the hub. So that's a cool thing. So it is actually acting as a parent or let's say a portal site or whatever we want to call this. And then you're able to search across the hub as well, um, which is a great thing. Now, how do we actually create these hubs? So we create these hubs uh, in a way that obviously as an end user, you cannot decide which, if, which of the sites are hub sites. As a tenant administrator or a person who has sufficient amount of permissions, you can actually do that. So you'll decide as an architect or an information architect uh, designer or a designer um, how many hub sites we'll have and then uh, how they will be scoped 
the, the organizations, which is a great thing as well. So you're able to actually limit the visibility of uh, people associating their sites to the hubs. And like mentioned already, that was a uh, understandable question. The hubs don't nest, so you cannot actually have hub sites associated with the hub site. Now, technically, uh, what's super, super important to realize that um, the hub site is nothing more than a out-of-the-box uh, modern team site or a communication site, which is then marked as a hub site. So there is no such thing as a hub site template. So you don't actually provision a new site collection uh, with a hub site template. We basically take an existing team site or a communication site and we'll say, Bing, you're now a hub site. And after that, depending again on the settings, um, any of the, the other communication sites and collaboration sites can be associated to it. The hub site itself has some level of an information. Uh, so you're able to manage uh, the settings like the image and, and the descriptions and all of that, which is then visible, for example, in the navigation, which is getting leaked on the on the sub site. The hub site logo uh, is visible uh, on, the, on the hub site, uh, up to three levels of curated notes in the, in the note sections including the taxonomy driven navigation is an option. So we basically support that note, uh, the, the node navigation, node uh, based navigation, which is then getting like all the taxonomy driven navigation. Now, somebody might be kind of, a, well, there's reasons behind of the, obviously in all of this, because one of the, let's say, classic ways of doing SharePoint infrastructure architecture is that, hey, but I want to have a massive site collection. I want to have a site collection, which is a structural site collection with subsites and everything else. There's multiple challenges around that one, uh, which I kind of touched uh, slightly when we started the webcast as well or sorry, the community call. But there's there's permission handling challenges and then there is actually performance challenges around those things as well. Do many, many, many numerous reasons. Some of them because SharePoint originally was in on-premises and, and now it's in online and there's there's dependencies on that. Now, and that's really the reason why you cannot actually have a structure or hierarchical navigation getting leaked from the hub site to the other site collections. And technically it wouldn't even make any sense. Now, the navigation, what you also see in the top, isn't actually reflecting uh, the same structure as uh, dynamically as what are the sub site collections associated to the hub as well. Technically we could do some sort of a, let's say customization to make that happen automatically, but that's not out of the box within the SharePoint Online. So, and, and the reason for that one is that quite often the navigation, which you see in these kind of portals um, actually link to a sites which are outside of the of the hub, or you might actually connect connect multiple hubs between each other in the global navigation, then move between the hubs uh, as you link through uh, on the things. And we do understand that it's a change in the mentality of thinking how we actually design uh, the SharePoint uh, structures in the in the SharePoint Online, but um, and obviously feedback is more than welcome in all of these capabilities. But I think anyway, this kind of makes sense uh, for, to, from a many many perspective. There's anyway not going to dwell on on that one, and we can dwell on that one uh, in the upcoming course as well when when you get the access on the capabilities. Now. One of the things and one of the reasons, uh, obviously, for hub sites and the thinking around the hub site is that in the past, whenever you've actually created your SharePoint online structure, it's been really, really hard to reflect those potential changes in your organization. Now that we actually defined the, the organizational structures, not as a site collection and then sub sites in a site collection, we can easily reassociate. Uh, the sites and, and structures between the hubs. And this actually gives us much more additional flexibility on the infrastructure architecture. So whenever the, the division name or there will be reorganized, uh, uh, there will be organizational changes within your company, because these are individual site collections or individual sites, even in a site, a site collection level, which are then associated between each other through the hubs. You can much more efficiently and much more easily do those changes between the associations. So you can actually change uh, who's owning what and who's, which of the teams and organizations are owned by which of the the, the hubs, so to say. So this gives more flexibility from that perspective. Now, 
that was more around the, the let's say the, the uh, marketing messaging and the stuff that Melissa and our some of our marketing people have been showing in the past. Now the next things and next phase, um, I'm going to take a few minutes and a quick demo as well around the technology and how do we actually make this happen from a technical perspective. Um, and I do apologize if I was unable to sell you the awesome idea of hub sites because I'm not from marketing. So I want to concentrate more on the technology side of the thing. Now, so let's talk about the options uh, on uh, associating a site uh, to a hub and how do we actually make this happen. Uh, one of the cool options here, uh, which is relatively new, uh, is also, well, not super new, but uh, we also asso support associating new sites or existing sites to a hub using the site script. So if you, for example, configure your tenants to use the site scripts and site designs and site scripts, you can always have a default association to a default hub site whenever a site collection is getting created. And the action for that one is super, super simple. It's join hub site and you basically just define what is the hub site ID. And hub site ID is the unique ID of the hub site, pretty logical. Um, so as you, when you are designing your information architecture, when you are designing your solution structure, uh, you basically light up the hub site in your tenant and then you can design your uh, site designs and site scripts to associate uh, these automatically. Um, oh, good uh, from Rahul. Can an existing association of hub site can be broken uh, and associated with the new hub? Uh, yes, absolutely. So this isn't permanent. Uh, you can anytime reassociate the site. Um, so you can reassociate uh, sites to a, another hub. Now, um, on this one, this is actually a super cool uh, capability because now uh, you can also limit the site design and site script based on the permissions. So you can absolutely make a default hub sites for different divisions and different organizations based on the user who's uh, creating the site collection. So if I'm coming from an HR organization, person is coming here, we always associate um, their designs or their uh, sites to a HR hub. And if it's a, let's say, a services organization who creates a new site, we always associate them to the services hub. So we're able to do all of this automatically based on permission settings. And so that requires some level of planning, but it's a super great capability uh, from that perspective. Uh, we also, uh, there's also an in, uh, interesting discussions, and this is something which I didn't actually even ask a permission from Sean uh, to tell this, but obviously it's in our roadmap and there's no point not being open on this one. We're looking into potentially, we can promise this, uh, but it's an interesting concept. Apply a site a design and script when a site is being associated to a hub site. So regardless where and what kind of capability or from UI or from API you're associating site to an existing hub, you might have associated site script in the hub level. So whenever somebody is associated, whenever site collection is associated to this hub, let's apply following script. And that following script could then apply uh, configurations which are then consistent for mm. all of the site collections within that hub. Yeah, no, super, thanks for sharing this one, Dessa. This is a super early preview. We're actually just specking this now, guys. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, hopefully we'll have some good news to show in Vegas, but uh, if there's this one might be worth uh, chatting about a little bit more at a future call, like just the, you know what the expectations are around that. Is it, is, is it the same site design that was applied to the hub? Is it a special one? Do you need more than one? Yes. You know, so some of those questions we'd love to get your feedback on. But again, that we, we can talk about that later. So, yes. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Yep, and, and like I said, we're not promising that that's going to happen, but it is in our, we know that this could be a logical thing, what we might want to do uh, in the future. <laughs> Cool. Uh, where am I? So let's actually have a quick look on uh, using the site scripts and to associate a uh, site automatically to a hub. So I'm going to do uh, something uh, quite simple here because I, I'm again spending too much time on uh, uh, talking, which is quite typical because I want to make sure that Paolo has time for his craft stuff as well. That shouldn't take too long, but still. Now, if I create a new site, so in this case, uh, actually Sean created us uh, this uh, site design and site script. So do my uh, permissions and do the limitations, uh, I'm able to see this join work hub demo. So obviously in real world, this would be called, uh, or you might actually set this in a way that there's a default um, uh, site design or a site script for everybody. So you always associate all of the site collections to a specific hub. You might actually have all of this visible 
only for a certain group of people. So as an example, HR people only see uh, these three, but then services people see a slightly different tree, uh, site designs and site scripts. And based on what they're seeing and selecting, they will be always associated to the same hub. So again, HR organization has their own hub and then the other divisions, their own hubs as well. So in this case, I'm just going to use the join work hub uh, uh, demos just to show this in practice. So I'm going to create, uh, let's call this uh, how are you trip? Um, something related on uh, travel agencies over so among the team in this cycle uh, tenant. So creating that one. And now the site is created and do my selection of that site design. And there is the automatic association to the site, um, so the hub. When I click finish, we actually see that the site, um, site design and site scripts uh, are getting applied. There we go. It is still applying the add site to the hub action. And whenever that one actually is completed, um, and that typically takes uh, slightly longer than the other ones, uh, but then it's quite fast. If I click View Updated Site, it's going to refresh, and we can see that we actually got the association to work automatically. So this way, I, I'm basically getting the theme uh, from the hub, and I'm also getting the navigation automatically visible from a hub uh, when I'm creating a new site collection. And that's really, really cool as well. So everything, you can do this automatically. Now, you can absolutely do uh, something uh, like this one also programmatically. So you could actually run the invoke SP design, like in this case, if I, if I have a new site, uh, I can absolutely apply uh, the site design, which would be that would be the same site design as what I selected from a UI uh, to the uh, to the uh, to an existing site, which would then apply that existing site uh, to a hub, and plus other actions as well. Good. Now, a uh, few more things uh, on the slide side. So I'm going to flip back on the slides um, and one more demo after that one. So let's actually build a hub uh, in practice. But on the PowerShell side, uh, so these are um, basically some of these commentlets are already available for you in the SharePoint Online PowerShell commentlets, but they do not work. So the our release uh, model is that we actually give you the PowerShells available, but you can hit them. It's going to actually tell you something like, hey, this is experimental feature. It doesn't work in your town yet. Uh, whenever we start the preview, we will make sure that the server-side dependencies, client-side dependencies, everything is, is up to date. Um, we will then announce the capability and we'll uh, enable uh, the hub site capability within your tenant. Now, for hub management, uh, there's a register SPO hub site, uh, and, uh, which is basically that you register an existing site as the hub. Uh, you're able to get to hub sites, you're able to set the hub sites, or set uh, SPO hub site is more around the metadata on the, on the hub level, which Super, it's super limited now. It's all about the, the title and the image, but there might be additional settings in future. And then unregister uh, SPO hub site, which means that you uh, unregister an existing hub to be a hub. So it's going to be then a normal site collection, and then you're able to associate that again to another hub. So you can't associate hub to a hub, but you can de hubify de hubify an existing site uh, and then associate that one uh, to an existing hub. Then there's the permission management, grant SBO hub site rights, uh, revoke SBO hub site rights uh, for managing who's going to see uh, the hub, uh, so who's going to be able to associate a site to those hubs, which is a cool thing as well. And then site level management, add an SBO hub site association. That would mean that we're associating existing site to a hub. And now you might be wondering, well, what's the difference between this one and uh, the ship, uh, Invoke SPO design or a site design? The Invoke SPO site design can actually have additional actions and things behind of the site script. Uh, the Add SPO Hub Site Association is only associating site to the hub, but there's no additional actions getting applied. Good. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a great <laughs> drinking game. <laughs> Cool. Um, quickly, let's actually uh, uh, do a quick test uh, on these things. Uh, so let me create a new hub uh, on this site collection or in this tenant. So we'll make sure that everything is working properly. So let's do this quickly. This shouldn't take too long, but it's actually pretty cool. Uh, so we're able to make things happen super, super fast. So let me create a site and let's create a communication site. Let's call this, uh, well, we can do a topic. Let's call this, uh, PMP call demo, so I will actually remember to delete that. No, I can't remember. 
probably will forget about it. So let's call this uh, Lapland on top. There we go. Uh, general purpose, and let's create a site collection or the communication sites. Um, this is so cool, by the way. Thank you, Sean, for working a lot on making things so much faster on the site collection creation because this used to be so painful. So one, two, three. There's our site collection. Excellent. Okay. Um, and now, uh, the, if we want to make this as our hub. Uh, it's a matter of an administrative operation. We could do that using an web, uh, API, or we could then run the PowerShell as well. So let me actually run the PowerShell. So uh, I unfortunately did not yet sign in on that one. So let me actually sign in. And da -da 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 -da. let me do that. Uh, oops. Boop, 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 boop. String is missing terminator. What am I actually doing? I can't see a thing. That could be the problem as well. I'm pressing some wrong buttons. It is getting dark in Helsinki. So there's my uh, sign in. And I do apologize. Uh, not super well prepared. I need to actually double check my password from all the account. And there we go. Now I will get the, the account in a correct way. So I'm using and signing in as an administrator. So I'm going to be Melissa today. Uh, so signing in as Melissa. And then I'm going to sign in using the password. Say out loud. In one of the demos, I still remember, I think it was some of the probably tech uh, ready back in like five years ago, I accidentally explained, I was demonstrating using my own tenant and then I accidentally was just explaining what I'm doing and then I was also explaining, hey, here's my password and then I needed to change the passwords in that tenant because then everybody knew my password. So uh, get the SBO hub site, uh, there's the current hub site so we can actually see the hub sites, basically the set SBO hub site. Uh, SBO hub site uh, is for managing these settings. So the title of the of the hub and uh, uh, and also the local URL uh, of the hub. So you're able to manage some of the settings. In the future, there might be additional things here as well. So permissions, which is a big thing, but still relatively limited uh, from a capability perspective. Now, uh, if we want to register a hub site, we just created our Lapland site. So let me actually get that URL. Up. So let's actually create that one or associate that to be a hub. So I'm going to execute that one, F8. And there's our Lapland hub getting executed, register SPO hub site and Lapland hub. And now if I get to my Lapland and if I do a refresh, we can actually see that we have a Lapland hub and add a link here. So let's actually create a quickly uh, address here, da, 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 AKMS uh, SPPMP, and let's call this SharePoint. And let's add another link here, Oop, uh, which would be then SharePoint. Oop. Uh, AK, AKMS SPDev uh, Docs uh, SharePoint. Now, there we go. So now I have a sub, uh, I have a hub, but then I need to create a site to associate that to the site to make sure that it's actually getting leaked. So let's modify and that hub site to quickly have a slightly different uh, look and feel. Uh, is that a cool enough? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if that's cool, but that's visible enough. So now if we create then uh, a new site, let's go to the SharePoint home. A new site. I'm going to create a clean site, uh, just a team site. It could be either one communication site or a team site. So it doesn't really matter which one you actually use. Let's create a normal team site. Let's call this uh, Rovaniemi, which is a city in Lapland. Uh, so we're going to actually tie in that then to the Lapland. So let's call that a uh, site general purpose. Create the site collection. One, two, three, four. There we go. That was super fast. Now we have a new modern site collection available. We do, didn't actually have uh, that. We didn't select anything super special, uh, so that uh, the theming or site design, which is getting applied, is relatively simple. It did apply a Contoso travel theme here, but actually, what we want to do is associate this one to the newly created hub. So if I now go to the site information and hub site association. We should see our Lapland hub there. 
and yes it is uh, it is actually available there so now if I select my Lapland hub and click save one two three voila and there's my site there's my theming leaked in from the hub side and there's my global navigation where uh, based on the settings which is getting controlled on the Lapland side and that's actually pretty darn cool isn't it Wee in conferences at this point people would be like yay and the crowd goes wild please disconnect again absolutely uh, so I can absolutely do the disconnection now on the disconnection um, it might be um, that uh, Jonas is looking into what's going to happen actually on the disconnection side oh by the way that's a good thing as well change the look uh, because I'm getting connected on the hub side uh, you can change the look so you're actually getting forced uh, on the theming and now if I go to the site information and reassociate this to be uh, or sorry if I select the none uh, it's going to keep the theming because that is a tenant level theme but I can at this point uh, you can say that navigation is going to go away and then uh, I can absolutely go and change the look and I can go uh, and change this to be something else or I could actually associate this site to another hub as well Oop, I didn't apparently apply and change the look so let's do Contoso programs click apply and now we're green, green again so all good uh, how does a hub site get classified? Uh, it does get classified when you're creating a site, so that's based on uh, the selection of the of the site. So it is the classification of the site is still exactly the same as it is um, in the past as well. So the hub site dimension doesn't actually change that. Uh, in this case, in this tenant, uh, it doesn't. Uh, we don't have. A, oh, sorry. Uh, the classification is invisible when I start writing something. It's the site classification in here. So the hub site doesn't have a separate type uh, classification uh, as such. Um, but now, what we were chatting around hey, if a site is getting associated to a hub, it would be cool if we would be applying a site script uh, because then we could do, if you have a business uh, requirement, that we would need to have a consistent classification between sub site collections as a hub site. As long as we could, uh, we have that capability of activating a site script as part of the hub association, then you would be able to associate, for example, business logic in Azure getting applied to the site which is now getting uh, associated to the hub. So you would be able to then do a lot of automation uh, on that side. So it's all getting there one step at a time uh, on this time. Now, um, cool. Uh, there's a lot of questions on the iron window. I do apologize, probably don't have time to answer all of this. I wanted to go one slide or two slides and then we move into Paolo and I'll jump into checking uh, what's in the iron window. Um, oh, that's potentially a quick thing. So Martin's question, just quickly explaining that. So the taxonomy driven navigation, in this case, this is a Lapland hub site. And if how would I actually do the taxonomy driven thing? It's actually nothing more than going to the site settings. Um, I have to say this, by the way, um, I'm so stuck on the classic SharePoint. The site settings, site settings, obvious the site settings is in here. And it, it's not there. So where's site settings? And it's a good thing that it's not there. So it's slightly hidden so that the end users don't know where it is. So let's go to the site settings. Well, they will know where it is, but it's not the thing where we want to drive people. So on the navigation, uh, so we can actually manage the navigation uh, in here. Well, right now it's actually uh, hidden, but you're able to do this, uh, the setting navigation settings and manage the navigation settings, and then you're able to flip to the uh, taxonomy driven navigation. Um, this may potentially be something which we need to look, look into because actually right now we don't see the navigation link here, and that's um, something, well, we should see the navigation link, so I'm able to flip to the taxonomy terrain navigation, and then it is just the taxonomy terrain navigation as such. So, good feedback uh, uh, from that perspective, or good question. Cool. Uh, on the CSAM side, uh, quickly explaining, uh, showing this one. So obviously we have the CSAM side covered pretty well. Uh, the hub site management is in the talent API level. And this is mainly because um, the SharePoint Online PowerShell is under the hood, uh, basically using these APIs. It does, though, mean also that you need to have pretty high permissions to be able to manipulate these associations, which is correct because uh, we want to have a centralized control for the hub sites. Uh, hub sites getting uh, 
done and hub sites getting created and associated. Uh, maybe the association could be something what the site owner could be able to do also using an API. Again, when we go to the preview, please give us feedback on these things and then uh, we can adjust uh, the functionality. On the hub related properties in site level, there is a hub site ID, which we're basically associating to which hub the site belongs to. And then is the site a hub site or not? Those are the things in the site collection level. Cool. Um, that's pretty much it. I didn't go to the too much on the on the implementation or the API usage, but obviously everything what you saw from a UI perspective or in a PowerShell perspective, we have an API to make that happen as well. So we've been really trying to uh, make, let's say, concentrate on that one. So you're able to automate these things as fast as uh, as much as possible. Now uh, I did promise the Paolo at uh, ten minutes, and now you have six. Uh, how do we want to call <laughs> Or maybe we, maybe we skip your demo and we talk about if there's random questions which we didn't uh, yeah, yet cover. We, we can even keep this demo for the next uh, <laughs> sick call if you like. Yeah. I'm not kidding. It's up to you guys. But yeah. I think it's I, I think rush. better that way because uh, there's no point yeah. rushing uh, to a completely different topics for five minutes. So let's yeah. actually do this. Let's go to Q&A. And if I missed any super important questions or Sean did miss any important questions, uh, Please let us know. Let Paolo go first next time. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, to be fair, I think the, the main topic of the day anyway was um, the hub sites. And, and we wanted to actually make sure that we get this recorded as well. So what's coming as a hub site, because it is coming relatively soon. Maybe one thing to mention on the hub sites. Obviously, when we go to preview, when we go to GA, if you're watching this video recording later, there might be small changes, and that's quite logical. These things do evolve, um, but we should be pretty close on uh, going to the preview. There's a lot of questions about the extensibility for search web part query all sites within a hub. Do you have any comments? So the search itself can be targeted to a hub site. Now, there is a separate, completely separate discussion around uh, the search extensibility in the future as the layouts and UI presentations and uh, SharePoint framework extens extensions for search. And we are looking into that one, but that's not explicitly hub specific. So uh, we're looking into doing that. Uh, can you create web part zones with SPFX? Uh, answer is basically no, because there's no web part zones uh, in, uh, there's no web part zones in modern UIs. Now, can I use CSUM to create web part zone? No, because web part zones in the classic experiences will be locked on a page. Um, do we know if hubs uh, navigation is above or below SPFX extension header? So now um, I, I think I uh, good question from Eric. So I did reply. I think it was Philip asking that earlier um, on the call as well. And the extension should be below the header. If it's um, other way around, then that's a mistake. So if we are in a hub site. If I go to the hub site, let's see, uh, where is my hub site? There's my Lapland hub. Obviously, this is uh, global uh, or bigger than the extension, which should be lower uh, underneath that one, because this is coming from hub. And then any site level customization should be underneath the hub navigation. So this is the higher level uh, navigation. Okay, sure. uh, and thank you. Uh, sorry, hub nav is above, which is correct. So. No worries, no worries, Eric. On that, any improvement coming to let modern pages have editable metadata with custom content types? Um, so the metadata and modern pages, we are absolutely looking into that one. Uh, I can promise when and where. Uh, it is absolutely in the backlog. Um, I can promise when and where and if it will be never ever delivered. But obviously, we are highly aware of the requirement um, that there should be a metadata in the modern pages. Multi-factor authentication of a tree system writer is an SDK. Ooh, sorry, Ralph. Not that topic now. <laughs> Aggregate sub uh, group calendar if they are team sites into a hub calendar. That's not there yet, at least. And I don't think more, well, I don't, well, potentially, obviously, we might have that in the future. Who knows? But I don't think that's in the short time frame actions. Um, because the problem is really around uh, the modern team sites has a group and group associated events. Uh, but <coughs> then communication sites don't have a group associated to them. Yeah, we can imagine maybe like rolling up select calendars, but yeah, we don't have anything about merging or aggregating calendars in our at this time. Yeah, so, yeah. 
group calendars are always asked for. Yeah, that's understandable. So the group calendars do work in the modern team sites extremely yes. well. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah. there's no problems with that. Now, on the communication sites, communication site is not associated with an Office 365 group, so it does not actually have a group calendar. So anyway, SPFX web points to access roll-up news data so we can customize display. Um, uh, it is actually search query. So for John, uh, John question uh, around SPFX web points access in roll-up uh, news data for hub site. The answer is yes, you can actually make that happen uh, because um, it is a matter of doing department ID equals the unique good of the hub, if I remember correctly the syntax. We'll get that one documented um, uh, during the preview, absolutely, so people know how to target uh, on the specific uh, news only or, or documents only in a specific uh, uh, hub. So good stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. In, in terms of permission, can we expect members of associated sites to get rights automatically? No, the site uh, permissions are still independent. Right, Sean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think we're guys, I, I'd love, uh, you know, share feedback and thoughts around that. I mean, we're uh, still working through some of the permission details uh, that we either will support in the near term or what we planned in the long term. Um, we can follow up with you on that. I don't have all the specifics. Yeah. And on Sebastian's uh, comment around seriously, no, seriously, come on, guys, extensibility and APIs to understand the context of HubSite is absolutely needed. Yeah, so the search API, search uh, targeting is will be there. Now, all of the other stuff which you're seeing in UI, we are working on uh, having yeah, an API agreed. exposure. So really, really important thing to make the HubSite successful. We get that. Uh, thanks, Mr. V. <laughs> Luckily, you didn't call me, sir. I always said that people don't call me sir or mister, call me dude. <laughs> because mister or sir makes me feel old. Okay, man. <laughs> okay, man. Cool. <laughs> Yo, Sean. Um, I think we're running out of time. So, <laughs> uh, should be able to do, yes, Mikael is actually the same, then department ID, site ID. That was actually uh, in Ignite, uh, I think, uh, in Melissa's uh, demo. Uh, she was showing how to make that uh, happen. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if we've shared much of this yet, but we do, are working on a site's web part that will, it doesn't answer the question of the programmatic stuff, but it does give you a way to surface connected uh, associated sites to the hub. Yeah. Yeah, so more on that. I, I don't think it's been released yet. I don't know what the ETA is. We'll get more detail. Yeah. Dear dude, Vesa, okay. Uh, any update on disappearing extension bug? Uh, we we are absolutely working on that one. That sh I need to, well, I have a um, following triage call within a two hours, so we can actually follow up on where we are with that. Uh, I think no auto inheritance of permissions is the right call for uh, this instance, in my opinion, from Chris. Um, obviously, all of, many of these things are debatable in a business logic, and potentially we might introduce an options to do certain things based on settings of the of the site design or a site screen, or settings maybe in a hub level, uh, which is saying, if I associate this to this hub, then it will inherit some of the permissions. But that could actually get super complicated and super messy, because what would happen to all permissions, and then people would be angry because they don't have permissions and all of that. So um, it's not super straightforward. Now, um, cool. I think that's pretty much. We're two minutes on the of the schedule, so let me close up uh, this one. Next uh, general SPDev SIG meeting is on March 8th. Uh, hopefully, that is actually the week of MVP summit. Um, we'll see. That should not impact on uh, obviously that does not impact on our community calls, and, and hopefully by that time we have more news on the hub sites. Who knows uh, when uh, we will actually light up things. The next SharePoint framework uh, special interest group call is on 1st of March. So within a week. And uh, AKMS SPP and B, we're working on a new site on all of this stuff. The new SharePoint dev oh. portal is coming quite soon as well. But I think that's it for this one. Thanks, Sean, uh, for dropping by. Um, Thank you, Bessa. Awesome stuff, guys. Thanks for all the feedback, everyone. Great questions. Absolutely. And keep the feedback coming. Uh, whenever we go live, go to the tech community, do the GitHub, let us know. So uh, let's fix and make this as best as possible thing for you as well. If there's anything to fix, obviously there's nothing to fix because it's brilliant as it is. But thank you, Sean. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the recording will be in a YouTube channel within 24 hours. Thank you. Bye-bye.